Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Well, today we're going to do a different kind of video. I was listening to this excellent recording of Doc Watson, Southbound, which I highly recommend. Today we're going to talk, this is going to be one of the first videos on Do You Know Your Records? What you are actually playing? What is the source of these recordings? Well, let's take a look. So, as I was saying, do we really know what is on our um, our records, actually? What is the source of the different records we're buying? Maybe it's something you never ask for yourself, but I think it's a fundamental point that sometimes a lot of people overlook, but I think it's worth knowing, since sometimes you're paying for this and you don't, you don't really know what you're getting. So, the main topic of today is gonna be the digital and analog sources of vinyl. Yes, exactly. This means that the most, uh, most of the records that you are buying now, today, have, unfortunately, I must say, a digital master. Mastering process and mastering final file. Yes, I mean, you would think I am I'm buying a record. This is an analog format. Why are we talking about digital? Well, unfortunately, I would say about 95% of the records made today are sourced from digi digital files, digital mastering. Even if by any chance they started uh, from the analog sources, the analog tapes, reel-to-reel -reel tapes, Unfortunately, then, sometimes the process, obviously for expenses purposes, is transferred, is converted in a digital file, which obviously makes it much more easier to master, to, to trim, to retouch, to adjust, because unfortunately, after all these years, the tapes do have some problems. Plus, the tapes are mounted on new types of machines or refurbished old machines which unfortunately do not have the correct azimuth the correct uh, settings that the engineers back in the 60s 70s 80s 90s whatever <coughs> obviously set it on that machine so the, the sound is going to be different plus there were some mistakes back in the old days and today unfortunately we overcorrect everything that's why Every darn single record, sorry for my language, sounds the same. So, obviously that's that's not true for everything, but you know what I'm what I mean. So for example, if we if we have a nice Nora Jones album, like the last release, or this nice retro style Lady Gaga and the Tony Bennett album, very nice. These all come from obviously from digital sources. Not only new, new, new albums like this obviously are recorded directly in digital. I mean, analog, they don't even know what that is. So forget about that. Obviously, when we start to go in something a little more back in, the, in time, they, they need to source, they need to start from the tape, the original analog tapes, which you know I I'm a great fan of, I don't know, the first thing I can get here, just to show you what we're talking about when I say analog tapes, is something like that. So when they get the tapes, at that point, they transfer the analog signal in their, into their computers, and at that point they have a digital file, which is very easy, as we said, to work on it. And that's okay, I mean, you can't have everything analog to analog. So that's the key point of this video. Perfectly throughout analog recordings and productions, 
and pressings, which means A A A. So that's mean, that means that our records is purely analog when it's A A A. Instead, we have different kinds, different typologies, which can be A D D, which means that the record, record comes from an analog tape and has been mixed and edited in digital and then mastered in digital, the last two Ds. Other times, instead, we have an analog source, an analog editing and mixing, and the final process is a digital instead, a creation of a digital master with which they will press all the different uh, copies of your record. Most of them, I mean, sound excellent. Uh, as I said, <clears throat> Something like this, is this is a reissue of the Beatles, of Let It Be, it sounds excellent, much better than all the other uh, issues, except obviously for the original ones, which were purely made in the analog domain. Something purely digital sounds excellent as well. I mean, I have no problems with that. But I think that people, the labels, the houses, recording houses, etc., should start to write this. Because I think that's that's an important fact. So, for example, if we take a recent reissue of the Wall, Pink Floyd, the Wall. Wow, this was this is incredible. It's an excellent edition, mastered by I think Bernie Grudman. Excellent mastering process. Completely identical replica. But if compared to an original. Pink Floyd album, the original Wall, the Wall album. Oh boy, oh boy. This is a completely different sounding record. And I think that's worth knowing. So be careful when you buy these reissues because unfortunately, the last step in most cases is, a, is the creation of a digital file, digital master, which means that there is a conversion, subsequently, an, an analog to digital conversion, which obviously will change the sound uh, of the analog tape. Nothing to it. <clears throat> so I wanna show you something like this. I would sug I highly suggest, highly recommend analog productions. Disclaimer, I do not have any type of affiliation with analog productions but their products are excellent. Obviously, they are very expensive. I have to warn you, yes. So for example, something like this, an, a beautiful, fantastic album of Nina Simone, Little Girl Blue. Well, this, the sound of this is incredible. This is an AAA record. They, they got the original tapes. They got the, the excellent sound from that. They mastered it in an analog domain until they made their the matrix from which they after that press all the subsequent records now remember that every pre every <coughs> mother lacquer every matrix goes around 500 copies so then you have to redo another one so that why that's why the the the, the price starts to go up unfortunately uh, uh, quality needs this to be done otherwise you're not gonna have that same emotion as people back in the 60s had when they bought this. Obviously, you can go around all this stuff, all these expenses, if you find used albums. A good place, you know it, it's Discogs, discogs.com, where you can find uh, all these albums used all, from all over the world at different prices. Obviously, some are gonna be excellent in excellent condition, hopefully near mint, bad condition, and so on. And you don't know what you're gonna get until you have it in your hands. So unfortunately, that's always a little tricky. If you're lucky enough, you can find it in crate diggings or in, in, your, in your local uh, thrift store or whatever. I just wanted to show you at this point a few excellent modern recordings, like this one. This is Dreams and Daggers. It just came out of Cecil McClure and Salvan, which is a triple album. The sound is incredible, and this was created today in an analog domain, edited, and finally mastered all in analog, and then pressed in records. The same 
we can say for this. This is a beautiful jazz album. Ferit Odman, he's a Turkish musician. Damirania, dedicated to Dad Dameron. And this was completely created in an analog domain, AAA. Great stuff. A variation of this condition, of this chain, could be something like this. This is an interesting aspect of the analog production of a, of a record. Since the recording of this record was directly captured live and immediately the signal was directly brought to the cutting machine, which created the master lacquer, which is something I think incredible. Obviously, this is very expensive and difficult to do, but the results are incredible. I must say that this precise album doesn't shine on that point of view, but it's a good album. And there are other types, obviously, of this kind of solution, but they're very rare. Well, thank you for watching and please post your comments and questions here below. I will put up a, a few links where to buy these albums, uh, suggestions on the good late quality labels and pressings. And in, in, the next, in the next videos, we will talk on further details on the types of records. But remember, always try to find the source of a record if you're interested. If you don't want to have problems on that, buy an original edition or something that came out a few years later, a repressing, which obviously, if we're talking about the 70s or 80s, and even the mid 90s, if you're lucky, are sourced from analog tapes, which is the best of the best. You know it. Bye guys, thank you.